بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد my dear brothers and whoever listens to this audio السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته in this short clip بإذن الله I will speak about a small subject that is in itself a huge huge problem and that is the waswasa of a shaitan or the whispering of a shaitan a lot of people because they don't understand the real issue about this can waste an amount unbelievable of time in trying to sort out a small something but that small something can become really fatal if the person does not know how to deal with it and I will speak about an issue that we all face and that is sometimes you are walking the street and a thought comes out of nowhere and suddenly starts preoccupying you how did that thought come about how much is a shaitan's doing in these thoughts and how much it is from your own self understanding this will reduce a lot of things my brothers in the day of qiyamah when we stand in front of allah tabarak wa ta'ala the excuse of it's a shaitan who made me do it will not stand valid the only answer that you can give there is i did or i didn't and i did because or i didn't because blaming it on shaitan will not work and this is clearly mentioned in surah ibrahim alayhi salam when a shaitan gives his very 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 scary khutbah that khutbah which should really really be in the heart of every single muslim when people are inside the jann uh, the, 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 the nar and i pray to allah not to mention us or not to put us amongst these people and they would hear something that they never ever thought they would hear that statement in itself will make a lot of people think 600 times before committing any act of disobedience to Allah tabarak wa ta'ala now what would that khutbah be how would people react to, uh, to that and this is my brother in a very very simple manner once people are in nar a shaitan will say this as Allah tabarak wa ta'ala says in the Quran a'udhu billahi min ash-shaitan ar-rajim bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim this is surah ibrahim ayah 22 wa qala ash-shaitan lamma qudiya al-amr inna Allah wa'adakum wa'da al-haq وعدتكم فأخلفتكم وما كان لي عليكم من سلطان إلا أن دعوتكم فاستجبتم لي فلا تلوموني ولوموا أنفسكم ما أنا بمصرخكم وما أنتم بمصرخي إني كفرت بما أشركتموني من قبل إن الظالمين لهم عذاب أليم A very very scary state The translation of some of the meanings of this ayah are as follows وقال الشيطان and الشيطان said لما قضي الأمر meaning when Allah decided who went to النار and who goes to Jannah and I pray to Allah to make us of those of the Jannah but the shaitan will gather every single person in the midst of the النار and then he will stand upon something where everybody can see him and he will deliver this very 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 honest yet very scary khutbah servant and he will say inna allaha wa'adakum wa'ad al-haq allah has promised you the true promise meaning that jannah or nar wa wa'adtukum and i also wa'adtukum i also promised you fa akhlaftukum but i failed my promise to you wa ma kana li alaykum min sultan and i had absolutely no power over you except and out to confess the jabtum except the only power that i had is i invited you and you accepted and you accepted fast jabtum means you responded you accepted my invitation fala talumuni do not blame me but blame and blame yourselves i am not the one who's going to save you and you will not save me i kafartu meaning i reject i disbelieve in whatever you associated me in the transgressors shall have a very very alien punishment subhanallah so a shaitan here gives us the answer he never had any power over us he invited us 
and we respond with positivity as invitation. So this brings me back to my original thought. Shaitan does not have and he does not waste his time on you. A lot of people imagine some kind of thought, whatever that thought is. And yet they entertain the thought until it becomes a reality in their mind. So what Shaitan does, my brothers, if we humans can study body language, your Shaitan is professional at studying body languages. Let's say I'm a man, I'm walking down the street, okay, and I see a beautiful woman. Allah Ta'ala has commanded me, وَعَدَنِ اللَّهُ وَعَدَ الْحَقَّ That if I lower my gaze, Allah will exchange that obedience with light in my heart and it's not going to affect me. But the shaitan promises you, if you look, you're going to get satisfaction. We don't get that message, but that's the feeling. So we look at the girl, okay, from head to toes. And the shaitan will come to you and says, you know what, you didn't look well. Look, look at the jeans, look at the, her handbag, look at the hair. How about her shoes? Oh, have you, did you measure, did you see the, 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 the earrings that she's wearing? So he invites you differently. If you entertain these thoughts, shaitan has found your weakness. Shaitan does not create a weakness, a weakness in you. You give him the weakness with your body language, with your words then he takes that, enhances it, and brings a whole load of other weaknesses. The thoughts, or what people call was worse, or what people think that the grip of shaitan on them is very strong, it's actually untrue. Some people think it's black magic, and some other people think it's depression. In any case, first thing to know that Allah does not give full authority to shaitan over us. If Allah left shaitan to do what he likes, we all will be dead by now. But alhamdulillah, you should know this. You are not alone in this fight. It's true. As Allah says in the Quran that shaitan can see us with his group from that which, or from the angle of the place where we can't see them because they are invisible. Okay, and we are visible to them, so they have the advantage of seeing us. Now, but hang on here. Shaitan seeing us, is it actually an advantage in the sense that he is strong? Or is it weak that he is? Actually, it's because he is weak. If someone can see you and you cannot see him and you are fighting him and he's your worst enemy and you, you are uh, his, his worst enemy, he sees you, but you can't see him. Actually, that is because you are stronger than him. Now, imagine if we could see shaitan, we'll beat him up to death every time he opens his mouth, right? So Allah Ta'ala conceals him, but so that he doesn't give him advantage over us because he can kick us because we can't see him, Allah sent us protectors, angels. So you are never alone. And the more dhikr you make, the more angels you have with you. The less thicker you are, <laughs> guess what? And the more the, 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 the malaika, the angels will just leave you to your destiny with shaitan. Shaitan, as I said in the last uh, clip or the audio, will study your body language. And I'll take again the beautiful women because these days women are the biggest calamity that has hit us. You see a beautiful girl in the street, okay, or a woman, it doesn't matter. Shaitan will start to pinpoint you, to look at her. What should you do that at uh, that moment there? Or you just took a turn and your eye fell on a lady. Now, what would you do there? The very first thing to do is not to entertain that look and not to entertain the, even the idea of looking at a woman. So what happens is, Shaitan sees a woman, he goes, look at her, look at her, look at her. You straight away, you shouldn't keep calm. When you say, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم, something unbelievable happens. And that is, you can be sure, 100%, that Allah Ta'ala has accepted your dua because you sought the help of Allah against an invisible enemy. The moment you go, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم, don't think for a split of a second that Allah will not answer you. Or that he will let you down when you needed him most. No way. 
He will help you and he will keep shaitan away from you. But you know what? Now count your own thoughts. When you're fighting, you're actually not fighting shaitan, you are fighting your own thoughts. And as I said in a previous video, or, uh, sorry, in a previous audio, or maybe not, you haven't got it, you are not your thoughts. Your thoughts are not you. Your thoughts are just a personality that you wear. When you are at home, you are a husband. When you are with your wife, you are a loving person. Your son, you are a father. At work, you are a manager. In the street, you are just a normal other person. With your friends, you are friends. So these are different personalities, but they are not you. They are not you. You are different than all of this. So the moment shaitan gets taken care of by Allah Taala and he gets away, instead of fighting the thought for which you sought the help of Allah, engage your mind into something else. Make a call. Read something, look elsewhere, scratch your head, kick your hand, do whatever you do. What this will create, it will break the pattern in your brain and then you start paying attention to something different and your brain will forget what you have seen and you move on. And don't ever think about it, just move on. Every time you are walking down the street and you remember an old sin, instead of being negative about it, say, Alhamdulillah who has reminded me this sin, so that I seek forgiveness for it. You know what shaitan is going to do? He is going to stop reminding you of those sins because every time you remember something of the past, you seek forgiveness from it. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Shaitan becomes a loser. So one thing to remember, my brothers, briefly, you see something or you do something or you hear something, break it away with Rajim and occupy yourself with something else Everything should get better, inshallah. It takes time to practice this, but eventually you'll get there. This is again your brother Abdul Salam Abu Hanifa. My telephone number is 078 76 40 Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.